It's week seven. Let's step into the huddle. Five, eight, five, ready. Hut, hut, hut. You're listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by Line Star App, the top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go Line Star Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now here are your hosts, fantasy football experts Joe Pizapia and Scott Bogman. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, and welcome to the pre-snap right here on the Line Star app. It is me, it is Scott Bogman, it is you, and we are here breaking down week seven in the NFL DFS style, courtesy of the Line Star app. Make sure you go get that Line Star app right now. Just stop everything you're doing except listening to this podcast. You should always be listening to the podcast, but go get that Line Star app and upgrade to the premium product. It's the best DFS tool site in the history of the universe and is going to help you just like it helps us prepare for this show every single week. And Scott Bogman, I'm going to take you through week seven. And certainly there's a handful of games here that have some really high totals that Bogman and I are going to be really focused on and we're going to be stacking. And just like we keep telling you every week, the good chalk is good. You just need to find a couple of those values. We're going to help you do that as well because I'll tell you what, Boggs, it really does start to feel like the last couple weeks, the strange outside of the Chase Claypool one week strange really so far this year has been that one off tight end or that one off defense. And I feel like this week it's the one off tight end you got to look out for. Yeah, yeah, it really could be it. uh, It's been it's been a strange year, to say the least. I mean, not just in fantasy and DFS. either. It has. I hadn't noticed. (laughs) Yeah. If if no one had noticed, I know it's the most cliche thing in the world. But I mean, it trickles down into kind of everything we do. So you're right. Uh, The good chalk is the good chalk for a reason. But you got to find those other deals around. So that's what we're going to try to help you do. Uh, this week and every week, of course. And we'll so. set your cash game lineups with you, too. We're going to help you do everything. And, of course, we're going to go head-to-head in the contest, too, for touchdowns. So let's kick things off, baby. Let's get after it. Detroit at Atlanta, starting with a big one right here. Here we go. Let's do this because <laughs> this is going to have a lot of attention on it. Matt Ryan was really low rostered last week. But you know what? He's putting up about 20 points a game, and that's something people are going to start taking notice of again. He is right at the top in terms of leaders and passing yards, and uh, he is 6,700 on DK, 78 on FanDuel. I could tell you, you know, I understand Gurley had a lot of, you know, uh, was the snaps. I think the snap percentage was very high for Gurley last week, right? The highest or the most amount he played all year, I think you said on Tuesday, right? It was the most touches he's had. Most touches yeah, he had all year. Touches. Okay. Yeah, it, so, it was over 25, I think. So Okay, so they didn't really equate to points in this game against Detroit. 6K for Gurley on DK, 66 on FanDuel. Is there any interest in him this week with some of that carryover? Because, look, Ridley and Julio are super expensive on both sides. 73 and 71, 84 and 83. So you got to pay through the nose for them. Hurst is 44 and 56, respectively, on the two sides. So are you going towards Matt Ryan and the offensive weapons through the air? Or is it just Todd Gurley, perhaps, too, in this game against Detroit? I'm not really into Todd Gurley. You know, Detroit did a pretty good job of shutting down uh, Robinson last week. It, that obviously doesn't uh, say anything towards their overall uh, run stopping ability because Jacksonville has been so bad recently. But I, I don't, I, I, I don't, I just think I'm not there with Todd Gurley this week. So uh, I think he's priced exactly where he should be, which means he's not a deal. Um, and if I'm not getting a deal, then I'm spending up. So I don't think I don't think I'm going to be into Todd Gurley too much this week. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I actually I'm good with Ryan and Ridley. I'm good with Ryan and Julio. If you want to keep double dipping there, uh, I think Hayden Hurst has some small appeal too. last game has been better. So maybe there's a trend there a little bit in the right direction. Uh, he's been getting open. It's just always finding him is the problem. Uh, yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, this game is going to live up to the total. We'll get to that on Friday. But um, I do like the other side of this game more because I think it's more cost effective. Matthew Stafford, 65 and 73. DeAndre Swift, I'm going to be in huge with DeAndre Swift. Uh, We talked about it and teased it on Tuesday's show on the recap of the hot take. And at 61 on FanDuel, I think it's a great value at 54. I understand Peterson's there. I get it. But it seems like since they've come out of the bye, at least it's a concerted effort to get DeAndre Swift the football I like that. He was getting the football against New Orleans, too. And if I like Swift, I have to fade a little bit away from something else, which I'll get to in a moment. 
Kenny Galladay, I'm all in, 67, 76. Going to be chalky as hell. Going to be high roster. Don't care. It's a pretty good value. Kenny Galladay should be able to come down with something like six catches for 100 yards and a touchdown in this game. It seems like that's something in his wheelhouse with this. And that's like just a regular old projection. There's always that one Marvin Jones game or two that crops out. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is it. However, I got to say, if I'm into DeAndre Swift, I'm going to fade away from the Marvin Jones game. I could be wrong. This has Marvin Jones written all over it, maybe, because it's the Falcons. Boggs, do you think that's the wrong path? Do you think maybe at least one share somewhere of Marvin Jones is smart? Get out of my head, Joe. Get out of my damn head. I, that's exactly what I was thinking, because I, I know that most people are going to be in on Marvin Jones this week, playing against a poor secondary in Atlanta. So the logic is there. I totally get it, but I, I'm with you. I think they're going to be focused on getting Swift involved. That was obviously the plan coming out of the bye. I think they're going to continue to do that, so I'm not going to be in on Marvin Jones again. We're a lockstep on that for sure. You know, this is the way smart people think. Sorry, everybody else. <laughs> well, it, because it's because I, I think there is good logic behind it because you look at it and you know if you're a fantasy football person, I'm a DFS person, just a fantasy person, you know, Marvin Jones is going to have two or three games where he explodes, but he doesn't seem to be doing that any close to it this year. And it seems like to me right now, the trend is a little bit more going towards DeAndre Swift in this offense. And look, and we might be wrong here. And Marvin Jones might have that 25 point game and we go, oh, well, crap, we missed it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, especially on DraftKings, where he's just 4,400 taking a shot. Like he is, yeah. he is dirt cheap on DK in a full point PPR. You want to take a shot there because he doesn't even need, like he doesn't need the touchdowns on DK as much to return value on FanDuel. He is 57. He doesn't need it, but it's a little bit more imperative because of that price. And I think that's where I would lean a little bit more towards Marvin Jones on DK. If you are going to take a shot, otherwise it's Swift, it's Stafford and it's Galladay. And I know you were really high on Stafford this week and you're not the only one too. I've seen a lot of people with some positive stuff on Stafford too. Well, Atlanta secondary is so horrific, you know, and I know we just said they're going to ratchet back, uh, maybe throwing the ball and give it to Swift a little bit more. But I think Swift is excellent at catching the ball as well. Right, that's so what I'm I think, thinking too. Yeah, I think that's going to be uh, heavily utilized in this game plan is throwing to the running back. So I think that uh, I think he's going to get very involved this week and Stafford is going to benefit from that too. So I'm uh, I'm I'm OK with starting Stafford, whereas I'm not really OK with r rolling Jones out there. You know, I was looking forward to this game for a couple of weeks, this next one, Cleveland at Cincinnati. And with Baker Ever Mayfield. Since the Thursday night game when uh, Burrow threw 61 passes. Right. And and I <laughs> and and I was thinking to myself, okay, here we go. Let's 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 get in this. Let's this is gonna be great. We're gonna have two down weeks for the Browns because they're gonna play Indianapolis. And it wasn't a down week. And then they had they faced the Steelers. But with Baker Mayfield banged up, I'm slowing my roll a little bit. Landry is not healthy. Uh, Beckham seems to be disenfranchised very quickly yet again. Kareem Hunt, I do like 6,800 on DK, yeah. 71 on FanDuel. Uh, I love Kareem Hunt this week as a fade from the top of the running back group. I think he's got huge upside. He's in my lineups already on both sites, especially on DK when you consider that, you know, he could catch the ball in the uh, backfield. I don't think Dearness Johnson is a terrible flex play at 4K and 4,900 respectively either, but. For me right now, it's just Kareem Hunt because I'm a little concerned with the health of this team. And the one thing that I'm not concerned about is Kareem Hunt against Cincinnati's defense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that Kareem Hunt is going to be buck wild in this game. I mean, I know he's listed as questionable and everything, but he's going to play. And, you know, we saw the disappointment from Dearness Johnson fumbling. Then Hilliard got in there a little bit as well. I think this is going to be a feed the beast game yeah. on uh, on the Cleveland side, and it's going to be a big Kareem Hunt week. Um, and I I have a little um, just a little tiny expectation for Austin Hooper, who is insanely cheap on DK, specifically four thousand fifty four hundred on FanDuel. I, I think he's a decent tight end buy if you're looking low as well. I think Joe Burrow might be a decent quarter quarterback buy too uh, on. On DK, he's just 5,500. I like it better than FanDuel. FanDuel, he's basically priced right where Stafford is and those guys, and I don't think that's fair. Like, you, you can't you can't look at Stafford and Burrow in the same matchup here and go, okay, I like Burrow better than Stafford. You just can't do it. It's just too hard. Yeah. Uh, but uh, on DK, it's totally different at 55. That's a huge discount you're getting on Burrow. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Burrow too, but I don't. 
I th- I think I, I may not like him as much as you do, and I don't think he's chalk this week. I get it. He threw 61 passes last time, but uh, you know, Cleveland got out to a giant lead real quick in that game with a healthy Nick Chubb, with a healthy Baker Mayfield. OBJ was healthy in that game. Landry was looking a lot better, and they're banged up right now. So I think this is going to be a lower scoring game than we saw last time, so I don't think he gets that crazy amount of passes. So I, I don't think Joe Burrow is still very effective and I love the price, like you mentioned specifically on DK, but I don't think I'm going to be into him as a lot of other people are for this week. Uh, yeah, I think he's a tournament play on DK. I don't love him on FanDuel at that price. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do love Tyler Boyd and T Higgins though. Mm-hmm. Tyler Boyd's a 54 on DK, 6K on FanDuel. Uh, Higgins is 53 and 57. Uh, I can't go back to the AJ Green well. I, I know it's super cheap. Look, he's just 43 on DK. If you want to throw a dart on there, I can understand. At 56 on FanDuel, I'd rather have T. Higgins. I just rather would right now. I understand I, he was good last week, but I, I'm not looking for carryover. Yeah, I don't, I'm not either. And it's funny, I was reading a PFF article, and they are talking about how uh, most of his production was done when he was lined up against a linebacker and Anthony Walker, who's not that great in coverage. And uh, the Colts linebacker is very, very banged up right now, Okariki. I think he played, but he he's you know, uh, got a cast on and then Anthony Walker played because Darius Leonard is down. So I think if Darius Leonard was covering AJ Green, we, we'd have a different story and he still doesn't look all the way back. So I'm absolutely with you on, uh, I I'm okay with firing out Boyd, especially because he's cheap on both sides this week. Same thing with Higgins. He's a nice value, but I'm not, I, I cannot reach back into that. Yeah. AJ it's Green. Higgins, well, it's Boyd and hunt. Those are the three targets I have in this game. And then that's and the rest is all interchangeable depending on the site. If you want to take a shot here and there, like I said, Burrow more on DK. You're talking about Hooper maybe in sp- certain spots too, where he's cheap. That I can understand. Uh, the next one's gonna have some chalk in it, but I don't care. Uh, Drew Brees is just sixty one hundred dollars on DK in the dome, and I know Drew Brees hasn't been great this year, but I don't care. It's Carolina. <laughs> it's the dome. If you're going to give me Breeze at 6,100, I'm going to do it. Sorry, it's going to happen. So yeah. that is just too cheap. Ow, he's seven. Here's a price variance for you. He is 77 on FanDuel, which he is closer to that elite level than he is where, you know, like the, the Staffords of the world are. And that is a big difference because Breeze is basically the same price as somebody like Joe Burrow right now. And that's <laughs> that should not be that that should not be. Take advantage of that on DraftKings this week. Alvin Kamara is at 79, top of the board. He's at 93, top of the board. The top of the board is good this week, uh, especially with Michael Thomas back, but not really healthy, or at least not 100% in my mind from everything that I'm hearing. I will take Kamara in this game, and I'm okay with standalone Kamara. I'm okay with Kamara and Breeze. The rest, I'm not going to really try to chase in this game, and I'm not going to chase Panthers either. That might be wrong. That's how I see this one, and I think Kamara is worth paying up for right now in this week. Yeah, I mean, uh, you said it the best way you possibly could is Kamara is absolutely worth the price this week. There's a reason why he's the most expensive running back. It's because, you know, 32nd ranked defense in Carolina. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm absolutely with you with Kamara. I'm actually I'm kind of OK with Manny Sanders as a bit of a contrarian play as well. You know, I know that he didn't produce with Michael Thomas, but he was also new to the offense and not. uh not really solidified yet. And I think specifically after a couple weeks ago, getting those 12 catches, I think that uh, Manny Sanders could have a nice game here, especially if Michael Thomas is more of a decoy than he is healthy. Like you mentioned before, that's the only other guy uh, in this game that I really like. I'm okay. If you want to fire out Robbie Anderson or DJ Moore, because their price is fine and they should be playing catch up against the Saints. So I don't mind those plays. Do you, would you fire no, up Mike Davis? banged up. I don't want him. I don't yeah, want him I'm, so. I'm with you too. I, I don't. I think this is where the Panthers Cinderella story is going to start to, <laughs> you know, yeah. come back. I feel like last week it kind of got caught a little bit, and then this week you go to New Orleans and we start going. Okay, that was really cute, Carolina. 
You did a good <laughs> job. We're very proud of you. Now go get a little snack and get yourself a chocolate milk and just go sit there and do your coloring. Okay, <laughs> go Carolina. get an orange wedge and just sit get down. a little orange, maybe a fruit roll up, and you can go and sit and you can do your <laughs> you can do your needle point a little bit, and then maybe your mom will pick you up when school's over. Okay. <laughs> Why like, do you sound like church lady right I, now? I, I don't. It's special because Carolina's special. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Who could be cursing this team? I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's Satan. the devil. Yeah. Or yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you enjoy that reference, boy, oh boy, you're welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I don't enjoy know who could it. Be? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> Satan. That's a good Satan? character. Dana Carvey on Saturday Night Live was good. Can we just stop and pause and and, oh, and recognize some funny stuff on that man? I always <laughs> I always liked his uh, his his uh, Jimmy Stewart imitation on his stand up. Jimmy Stewart. Could you, know, you the squeeze one it a bit? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and if you don't. Go Google it, and uh, you're welcome in advance, ladies and gentlemen, because we want to keep our jobs here on the program. We can't really go into that, but we can go into keeping Alvin Kamara in your lineups and Drew Brees. Um, Boggs is right, because at some point they probably will be behind, so DJ Moore at 56 and 66, pretty good. Uh, Robbie Anderson at 6K and 64, also pretty good. I would lead towards Robbie Anderson, spend up for the extra 400 bucks. Um, it's funny. Robbie Anderson's 200 hours cheaper than DJ Moore on FanDuel. I would go Robbie Anderson on both. Um, I prefer this as a play again on DK more than FanDuel though, just in case they don't get the touchdowns. Like you could take the PPR points to the bank. That's fine. But I think touchdown equity might be a little harder in this game. We'll find out. Look, the saints defense has allowed some teams in things before, and we've had a lot of shootouts in the dome. So yeah, not impossible. All right. So what do you think of the bills this week against the jets? You think, you think the ownership of the defense is going to be what, like a hundred percent. I mean, it's five K top of the board, 47 top of the board on DK. And, And I mean, I can't argue against it. I mean, Sam Darnold's going to be back, but at the same time, I mean, it's not like the jets are any good. Yeah. The jets are miserable and nobody wants to play for Adam Gase right now. You can tell when they got shut out and I can't, you know, I, I'm one of the uh, every single person that watches football uh, that's not in the Jets organization that goes, how does Adam Gase still have a job? So, yeah, I think the Bills are going to be they're going to be worth paying up for this week because I don't expect the Jets to do much at all. Uh, I like Diggs, 7K, 7,500. I like Diggs. I want Diggs. Um, the, the running situation is, is bad there. Uh, it really, you know, Devin Singletary's had opportunities really to kind of you know take the ball and run with it no pun intended uh i don't know if zach moss is going to get some play in this game i think it's allen and Diggs. john brown hasn't been healthy i know beasley has some moments but it's as one-sided as we think this game is going to be i still don't love it from a dfs standpoint because i want games where the offense is to keep going and going and going i want games like tennessee and houston last week so i like the defense other than that i kind of staying away from this one altogether yeah, I mean, I in a in a tournament play, I'm actually okay with P Ryan over Flacco because he had more snaps. Didn't get more carries, but he did have more snaps. I think I'm going to start working him in more. And we saw Buffalo get gashed by uh, by Kansas City in the run game. They averaged like over seven I mean, yards P. Ryan per over carry. Four or P Ryan? You said Flacco, so I don't know. Oh, I said Flacco. No, yeah. I meant P I Ryan think over. Just thinking four. about Joe Flacco because he's still running somewhere right now. I hate him. Is, I hate him so he's much. Still running uh, backwards. I know. I know. <laughs> Flames uh, but, but, shooting yeah. out of your head. Yeah, yeah exactly. So P-, P Ryan in like, you know, I mean, we're talking cheap lineup that you're willing to throw away just to take a shot like that. Not not anything more than that. But I, I would like to see him get a little more run this week. I mean, they got to incorporate some youth here sometime, right? It can't be well, flat going think, four and crowd. Well, well, here you, you know? go. If, if it seems like we're going to get Darnold this week, and if we do – you're right. It would be smart to see, okay, what do we have in P Ryan? But I think right. if you had some in P Ryan, you probably would have seen him already. And that's, I guess that's my concern. And that's why I think it's Diggs. I think it's Allen because it's been, you've been able to keep both of them. However, how far do you have to push this? Like, I feel like this is going to be another repeat of what we saw last week where the dolphins get a lead and then they just sit on it for the second half yeah. of the game. And I, and I that's not going to be good. So I would, I would take the defense. I would pay up for it this week. I'm okay with it. And then I would move on. Yeah. I am not okay with this next game. I am I am altogether frustrated. Maybe, maybe the Dallas Cowboys do show up. Okay, fine. <laughs> maybe Andy Dalton plays better than he did. Okay, fine. Maybe. 
It's Washington, maybe, but maybe not. And I cannot wrap my mind around this right now. The direction of the Dallas Cowboys is not a good one. And when you start hearing all this leaked information about, I don't like the coaching staff and they don't prepare us and they don't teach us and coach us up and blah, blah, blah. Dude, that is not a good good. sign. So you tell me what you think about this situation, because right now, this game scares the crap out of me. The only thing that I'm excited, like legit excited about in this game is Logan Thomas at 3,500 on DK and 5K on FanDuel. To me, he is that strange we're talking about. Because you can make the argument for Terry McLaurin, but he hasn't been healthy either. I can make it more on DK at 5,800 than I can at 71 on FanDuel. You know, just because of the, the scale of the pricing, he's a little bit cheaper on, on, on the DK side in terms of relative value. But, dude, like, I'm not confident in Washington at all. And the Cowboys right now, my confidence has just hit rock bottom. So uh, is this mean that I'm stupid and there's an opportunity here? No, uh, I, I don't. I don't want to mess with uh, the Cowboys, really, until we see Andy Dalton, you know, pull his head out of his you-know-what. So, you know, let, let's let's see him and the coaching staff. Cap? Yeah, oh. yeah, and, and and the the coaching staff as well. You know, like let the guy throw the ball downfield. If it's gonna end up in picks, so be it. But you have to let the guy throw the ball down the field. Otherwise, you're limiting your offense wholly and completely. Let him throw it. Let him sling it a little bit. So I guess maybe there's value because you would expect them to do that. But you know, McCarthy hasn't been known for putting together any common sense recently. So. Uh, I, I'm with you on that, but, but I, Terry McLaurin's price specifically on DK is just so good. Yeah, you have 58. to buy him this week. It's, gonna, it's probably chalky, but I think you have to. And, and here's the thing. It, it doesn't have a lot of ceiling. I think you're just buying floor and I still think it's okay. You know what? I disagree. I think it's floor and you think ceiling. You think yeah. Kyle yeah. Allen because has ceiling in him right now, I hope well, so. Well, look, I don't mind I Kyle Allen in it. This Cowboys defense is horrendous. Kyle, uh, Kyler Murray looked real bad the last two weeks uh, before coming into play Dallas, and they made him look like Joe Montana. So uh, I, I think he's going to be – I think Kyle Allen could be real good this week, but even if he's not, I think you're right. I think McLaurin and Logan Thomas are your plays, and I don't mind a contrarian play on Gibson as well. I'm probably just going to say that for another couple weeks before he burns me two more times. If he burns me two more times, I'm probably going to be out. But, uh, you know, I know he's getting less touches, but he once again, he's a guy that doesn't need a bunch of touches specifically against this defense. So I like Gibson a little bit too. Yeah, I just I, – I struggle so much. and it, It's very frustrating because, you know, when you have a team like the Cowboys that has five relevant fantasy players. I mean, how many have five relevant fantasy players? And now I'm worried that the quarterback can't accomplish anything with them. Right. And I, 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 I was actually talking with Andrew Erickson uh, today for uh, doing the interview. I do weekly with him for the TV show. And Andrew's a smart kid. And uh, that's why I have him on the show all the time. And he said he thinks that, you know, talent will rise eventually with Andy Dalton. So guys like CeeDee Lamb will actually still be good. He said it's some other guys that are going to fade like Dalton Schultz, guys who are backups and things like that. And I think he's right. I actually think that's a really astute way of thinking that, you know, a great quarterback makes everybody better. But what you're going to see with a lesser quarterback is the guys who are super talented will still be pretty productive. But it could be guys like Gallup falling by the wayside. It could be, you know, it could be some other guys that just kind of fall into non-existence. But from a daily standpoint, again, I just I can't get involved with it. Now, the big question is, I had a couple of days to think about it. And can I learn to love the Packers again? And the answer is no, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I tried. Uh, Here's why I can't because Aaron Rodgers is 81 on FanDuel and I might as well just get Kyler Murray then, or I might as well get Russell Wilson. And I just, I'm not going to do that to myself. Uh, I do love Aaron Jones, 7,200, 8,500. Uh, I am sure that Devonte Adams will be good this week at 79 and 89. But if I'm going to, you know, uh, Bradley Roby has been pretty good. Now they'll move guys around away from Bradley Roby, but Bradley Roby, it matches up with the number one most of the time for Houston. And he hasn't given up more than 45 yards this year. Well, here, so. here is my point that I was making. I can't go up to that price for Adams this week because I want Camara, and it's not even close to me this week. Camara is by far that guy. And, and if you want to know why <clears throat> let's head over to the line star app and find out. 
because right here, uh, right, I'm going to read straight from the Line Star app card on Camara. Carolina ranked 32nd, 1.6 rushing touchdowns the last nine games. Carolina ranked 30th, 118 rushing yards over the last nine games. Carolina allows 26% uh, more fantasy points to running backs when they're on the road. Uh, that's just a couple things right there. <laughs> but, uh, okay, I could go on, but I won't. So, would you pick if you had to choose between Kamara and Jones? You would still go with Kamara. I would still pay up for Kamara. However, however, I don't think that fading Kamara for Jones is a terrible idea because Jones does save you at least was it seven hundred dollars or so that you could spend elsewhere on Fanduel, and that's that's a fair amount. Um, if you wanted to pay up for a quarterback, if you wanted to pay up for another big wide receiver. I, I'm fine with that. And you might have to to game stack something like Atlanta and Detroit because yeah. those guys are expect You can't get Ridley or Jones without paying down a little. You, I don't think you can do that in Camara and really come out with a great lineup. Like I just, you're going to, you're going to be taking one or two more shots than you want to. I think personally uh, in cash, I can also understand paying down for Aaron Jones and, and paying up a little bit and getting higher floors for everybody, or that allows you to pay up a tight end if you want. And I'm okay with it. Like, I don't think Rodgers is a bad play. Uh, Jones, excuse me, is a bad play this week, but I would prefer Kamara. And yeah, Kamara is going to be too. through, and I don't think it's wrong. I just don't. Yeah. Uh, and again, here's a perfect example of why I don't want Aaron Rodgers, because I can also get Deshaun Watson for AK. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, duh. Like, <laughs> not doing it. 68 yeah, I mean, on Don't D- say duh. I know you don't like Aaron Rodgers, but uh, he, he can prove everybody wrong, and he'll be out to do that after – having a terrible game yeah, last yeah, week yeah, so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm just Spooky saying goes. i'm just not i don't Spooky. like aaron Rodgers either he beat my team in the super bowl so i'm not a fan but uh i mean i don't i don't think i dislike him as much as joe does so no no i just hate his face box just hate his face <laughs> it's understandable <laughs> anyway, i'm, I'm, I'm with you week, and it's funny because the last time i did this i went on aaron Rodgers against i think it was the giants was that last year I think it was one of these games where he, like he hadn't had a good game in a while. And I was like, okay, it's going to be against the giants. And he did. And I won money with him. So I was like, okay, <laughs> what, you should year, like him. Then he's won no, you some money. It's like before. once a year I get in with our Ryan Rogers. Like I'll find that <laughs> one matchup where I like it. And if he doesn't do it for me, he's dead to me. Like I can't, you're like in those hero of the week shows when, uh, you know, you have to team up with the bad guy to beat the really bad oh, yeah. guy. Oh, that that's, totally. that's you. It, it's totally suicide squad kind of feel. <laughs> With the Packers. Um, I love Aaron, Aaron Jones. All the Aaron Jones all the time. And look, be better than me, everyone listening to the show. Separate yourself personally from these things. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I'm doing <laughs> this for comedic effect, but there's a lot of truth underneath it all. Uh, yeah. Deshaun Watson at AK, love him this week. Uh, forget David Johnson. Give me Will Fuller. Give me Brandon Cooks. Cooks specifically is a great value this week. 52 on DK. I don't know how that happened. It should be higher. He's also just 59 Brandon Cooks on FanDuel. That should also be higher. I like both of these guys. Fuller, you have to pay more for, but I think the Watson Cooks is. I don't, Alexand- I don't want Fuller. Jair Alexander, I don't want Fuller. Jair Alexander, number two ranked corner um, in uh, for PFF this season, and he's going to be on Fuller. That it may it pushes me way more towards Cooks. Oh, I am all in on Cooks anyway because of the price. So yeah, uh, Cooks and Watson allows you to go up, and you can get Kamara in. in that's easy. Like that, yeah. like that, just that cook savings is allows you to do it across the board. Uh, I'm also into Darren Fells this week. Uh, 5,300 on uh, DK, excuse me, on FanDuel, 41 on DK. I like Fells. Last two game logs have been very good for him since the coaching change. And especially if you're talking about Will Fuller having a hard day at the office, maybe Darren Fells is that, that piece, right? That one off yeah. piece that we keep talking about. I'm putting Logan Thomas in that conversation. I'm putting Darren Fells in that conversation this week. Last week, it was Trey Burton. A couple weeks ago before that, it was Jimmy Graham. I think it's Darren Fells this week. Okay, one thing I want to point out in this game, and that is that, and I know you don't like him, and I don't particularly care for him either, Joe, but I think it does need to be said that David Johnson has gotten 20 touches a game the last two games since the new coaching staff has come in, and the Packers got gashed by uh um they they got gashed by ronald jones last week so i think david johnson 
is an okay buy because he is a cheap option. So if you're in that range and you're looking for someone, I don't think I'm rushing out to get him on my lineup, but I do think he's okay if you know that's something that fits in your flex spot or whatever you're looking for. I'm okay with David Johnson. Yeah, I understand it. I kind of feel the same way I do about Jonathan Taylor. Like he's getting all the volume, but so what? Like right. he's still averaging 12 fantasy points a game. And I'm just kind of like, eh. Like I could get that. I just wouldn't be surprised if he got the yards and then. I wouldn't be surprised either. Look, it would not shock me. Um, but I'm gonna put my fantasy dollar with Watson and uh, at Fells and Cooks. And if I do that, then I'm kind of cutting my nose to spite my face. If I if I think DJ is gonna be good, then I I I should pivot then. And if you do and you're listening to us, then Watson and DJ is what you should do, and you should fade away from the other guys. That's yeah. what you should do instead, but I'm going to go with the receivers. I'm going to try to get some more points from those receptions there. All right, here we go. Pittsburgh at Tennessee. Woo, here we go. Big <laughs> Ben, 66 and 74. James Conner, 67, 72. Then you've got the receivers. you got Claypool still holding the line there, 64 on FanDuel, 57 on DK. Juju is the same price basically on FanDuel, 65, and basically the same price on DK, 55. Deontay Johnson will be back in this one. He's just 42 on DK. He's hit rock bottom salary for uh, 58 for him. You got James Washington, but I can't, <laughs> I can't go there. No. Uh, so I guess here's the big question. How does a healthy Deontay Johnson go in and muck up this mix right now that they've got? You know, I don't think he does too much to mess with it outside of, I wouldn't want to roll out James Washington. I think that, you know, Ryan Tannehill is going to put points on the board and, uh, that is going to make Ben throw the ball more than he has this season. So I think all of these guys are in play. I think Claypool, Juju, and Deontay are all in play. I think that if I'm picking one, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to Juju. I think he's going to have more of a breakout game this week. That secondary for Tennessee is not good. Uh, I, I think Claypool could get in the end zone. Like they love using him on that reverse around the the goal line anyway. So uh, I I think this could be a a decent week for all these guys. But if I'm throwing one dart, it would be for Juju this week. I can't pay up for Derrick Henry this week just because I like Kamara more. And it's not Henry. Like I still think Henry's going to have a good game in this one. He'll probably have a hundred touchdown or something to it. But is Tannehill, AJ Brown, an interesting contrarian play? Because everyone will be down on – Tennessee this week because of the Steelers defense, but AJ Brown's got five red zone targets since he's come back. Um, the price is, it's funny. He's pretty high on DK's at 63. He's just 68 on FanDuel. I actually like him more as a FanDuel play with all the red zone targets he's getting. But is there a contrarian love at all for Tannehill and AJ Brown in this? Week? Absolutely. I, I think yeah. there's, uh, there's nice plays with uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these receiving options for Tennessee this week. I mean, you Fisker? can, if, uh, yeah, you, if you could go down to Frick, sir. You you Frick, could. Sir. Frisker. What about Frisky? If, if you, if you, you want, want uh, oh. but I, I like A.J. Brown a ton. I mean, Ryan Tannehill, I think, is number one, uh, number one in quarterback rating uh, against pressure this season. Uh, and then uh, the Steelers are by far and away the team putting the most pressure on quarterbacks this season. So it just it it's not a great matchup for the Steelers defense, which we both really like. Right. It's just not the best matchup for them. So I do I do think Tannehill well, and A.J. Brown can be successful this week. Tennessee did lose a piece in the line with Tara Luan. So that, yeah. that, is, that is, you know, a little bit of an opening there. But um, the Steelers lost with their play Devin caller, Bush. Devin Bush. So. Yeah. Piece oh, for a piece. Single caller on that defense. Is he? What's that? I didn't realize he's the single caller on that defense. Uh, yeah, he started uh, last year and then he carried it into this year. So, but there, I, I saw Spillane with the green dot, the guy who was backing him up uh, when he came in, and and they didn't, you know, they didn't go make any moves to sign anyone. So it's going to be Spillane in the middle of that defense. He, he made some nice plays last week, but uh, you know, uh, obviously, I think he's going to be targeted uh, early and often. So if John who's healthy, that'd be great. Ferkser might not be bad either. So frisky. Frisky, Frisker, Frisk, Frisker, <laughs> Whiskers, <laughs> Whiskers. <laughs> oh, good. You know what? That's another guy, though, too. But in all seriousness, that could be your other one off tight end. I, I think you take shots at tight end this week. I really do. You save the money, you go pay up for the like, because you can afford to take a goose egg at basically a tight end 
if you could get the Bills defense and all the other things that we're talking about, and these like you can get Kamara Bills defense, and I basically just did it in a FanDuel lineup, so I can tell you right now, it is it is very very doable. Uh, yeah, he's so, five thousand on FanDuel, Ferkser, and three thousand on DraftKings. Three thousand on DK. Jeez, yeah. uh, three square. I mean, but but we're not. We're, John who might play though. Well, so. that's what I mean. You, you need the clarity there, but but just just to be clear, uh, if you take Fells. I got a lineup right here with Watson, Swift, Camara, Metcalf, Cooks, uh, Hunt, and Bills defense. I mean, that ain't hard to do. I got six yeah. K left over for use your imagination. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, there you go. Like, those are all the guys we talked about, right? And what did I have to do to get there? Fells, and right. that's pretty responsible, all things considered, the way the tight end position's gone. Um, let's move on to this next one here, which is going to have a ton of chalk attached to it. It's uh, the Arizona Cardinals at home against the Seattle Seahawks coming off of a bye. Kyler Murray's at 71 and 84. Got to pay for him. I am not going to chase that Kenyon Drake game. No, no, not going to do it. Kirk has some tournament appeal in GPP at 49 and 54. He's had some big plays lately, but he doesn't have a high floor. It's boomer bust for him. Of course, you got to pay up for Hopkins, but I kind of use that same thing where there's so many wide receivers I like this week with Kenny Galladay and, yeah, we've talked about some other good values there. I just I have a hard time paying up for Hopkins as bad as Seattle has been. I think Kyler Murray is actually a good standalone play this week. What do you think? Would you rather pair him or do you think you are okay with just Kyler on his own? Um, I'm okay with Kyler on his own, but I prefer to pair. Uh, I, I I love I, I love this matchup this week. I mean, we know that Seattle has been miserable against the pass uh, th- this year, and uh, I we've seen Kyler Murray get right. He got right against Dallas. I think he's going to play a little bit better in this game too. So I'm okay paying up for Kyler and paying up for Hopkins. I think they're both good options this week, but if you had to, I think it's still Camara. If you're picking one of the, you know, most expensive players in DFS, uh, Camara versus Hopkins, it's still Camara, right? Oh, for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. For me too. Coming off the buy too. Yeah, I mean, coming off the bye at home, I think they're gonna have people in the building too, or at least they're trying to. In I New mean, Orleans? No, I, they're not. I thought they were talking about that this week. No, no, they were talking about moving to uh, uh, moving to Baton Rouge, where LSU plays, so uh, oh, to, okay. to have people in the stands. But I think I think it's just a threat. I don't think they're gonna get anything done with that. Well, it doesn't matter. The only person they have to have is Elvin Kamara. As long as he's yeah. playing, I think we're good. Uh, Russell Wilson's at 8K over on DK, 87 on FanDuel. Um, it's hard not to like Russell Wilson. It's a good cash game play if you can make other things work. I will tell you this. Uh, I will be going, if I'm going to target this game, Chris Carson's going to be a huge target in it for me, 64 and 76 respectively. Um, I think he's a really good value. You look at what's gone on recently, too. Uh, Arizona's ranked 23rd in rushing yards allowed over the last 10 games. So, I mean, they're just giving up yardage totals. He's been catching the football. That gives him some extra point love, too. Um, I I know he's, you know, you have to pay a medium price for him, and I think you're getting a very strong floor, and you're getting touchdown upside with Carson all the time because this is an offense that's going to score. I love DK Metcalf's price. This is another reason why I don't want to pay up for Hopkins. 72 on DK, 73 on FanDuel for DK Metcalf. Sign me up. I will take him over Lockett in this game. You always have the one-off guy. Like, you know, maybe it's David Moore who has a decent game. But I'll tell you what, man. It's DK Metcalf. It's Carson. It's Wilson. That is the stack that I would specifically be looking for in this Seattle game. All right. So I have a couple things with this game. Number one, I'm okay with starting pretty much anyone on Seattle because uh, Arizona's defense is not great. So I'm good starting anyone there. But I will say that. Uh, the Cardinals have been pretty good at keeping wide receivers out of the ends on this year. I don't know if that is uh, a coincidence. I would chalk it up to more coincidence than well. I'm going to uh, try to think right else. now. They've played. Uh, they've played uh, Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm to go backward mm-hmm. in my head. Um, who else have they played so far? Uh, hold on, I'll, I'll pull it up here. <laughs> but uh, the other thing is that I don't know if you noticed. I know you said you're not chasing the Kenyon Drake game, and I, I'm fine with that. But that that the prices were made before Kenyon Drake had his big Monday night football game. So he's unbelievably cheap. It's specifically on DK. He is uh 4,800. Does that entice you a little bit more uh, with Kenyon Drake knowing how cheap he is, or are you still just, I'm not going to chase this at all. Wait, who is 4,800? Ken- Kenyon Drake is 4,800 on DK. Ugh. 
I, that's a great price. I know you said you don't want to chase him, but I mean, he's cheaper than Antonio Gibson this week. Have I seen this properly? Yeah, yeah. They, they well, they they made the prices before the Monday night game, and he had his huge breakout. Oh, game. yeah, that's why it was. Okay, yeah, that's the only reason. Um, uh, it's tough. You know what? On DK, that's historically tighter. Okay, as a flex play, all right, because he yeah. will get play in this game so well, would you rather go with him at 48 or antonio gibson at 5000 no uh, kenyon drake it's a Me much too. higher in right. this game i even right. close so that's why i wanted to point that out by the way you asked a question about the uh and, and you're absolutely right about keeping these guys out of the end zone it was uh san francisco week one right, uh, washington it. week right. two I mean, detroit asking. with no kenny galladay okay, week three. Uh-huh. uh then the then the Panthers and then the Jets and yeah, the Cowboys. Okay. So, so you can take that stat and shine it up real nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm a DK Metcalf guy this week for sure. He's not over expensive anyway. He's probably properly priced and and Lockett's good too. So I'm and and Carson, like you mentioned before, Joe Carson and Wilson, my favorite buys on the Seahawks this week. Yeah, Kenyon Drake at 48. Uh, the more I'm staring at it now, I'm yeah. Thinking. I think you have to consider it. Strongly. I'm here, Joe. That's why I'm here. Yeah, Joe. That's why here. You pick up the pieces of my broken heart, <laughs> of the Green Bay Packers. You put it back together again, and you, you give me presents like Kenyon Drake. And uh, he's averaging 13 points. You know, he's still under 15 points a game average, even with that huge game. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he broke off an 80 yard touchdown well, run or whatever. But that's the whole was, thing. So. Like, that's why I'm not chasing it because. But he's that still part. getting more snaps and more carries than than I Edmonds. I know. So, yeah. That that that's the thing, and and the, and he's involved in the passing game, which is what Seattle is really bad at, you know. So I, I think let me just look check the snap. I would count not for, him on Fanduel at six K. By the way, just for the record, you 40, can have DeAndre Swift for a hundred dollars more. Forty two to twenty three. Well, uh, Drake out snapped Edmonds on Monday Night Football. So there's st- he's still the main back, well, even though we I like Edmonds more too. So I don't know if that changes with this game script if they're going to be in a shootout as opposed to sitting on the football a little bit more. Right, right. That's but true. but 4800 regardless, it's something to it's, it's a, a lineup. Buy. Builder. It's a buy. It's a buy. There's no doubt about that. Uh, this next one, I'll tell you what. The one thing I like the most in the Kansas City Denver game is the Kansas City defense. You know, I think they got <laughs> with their pants down against Vegas, but outside of that, this defense has played pretty well most of the year. They're opportunistic. They get sacks. They can make turnovers happen. I like that. Uh, the Denver Broncos have trouble scoring touchdowns. We all know that. I know Melvin Gordon's going to be back. Tim Patrick at forty six on DK is an interesting punt because he's getting a lot of target share right now. Uh, but I think he's like highest in the league in air yards as well. Yeah, it's so. crazy like that in the last couple of weeks. Um, I will say this too: you want to talk about like variance things? Clyde edwards helaire at seven K, I don't love on Fanduel, but at sixty one, I've got a lot more attention for it over on I DK. Just, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that. Well, I, I don't. Here's my argument. Are we really going to believe that Le'Veon Bell is going to be super useful five days in to the playbook? Because I actually don't, don't, I don't really care about Le'Veon Bell. Denver, and I just, I got to give it up to them, have been much better at, even with all the crazy injuries that they've had on the defense, they've been good at stopping the run this year. What are the chances that Casey doesn't have a lead and they just turn around and hand the ball off a ton in this game? I don't know. Not much. Uh, I mean, you don't want to, you just don't want to take the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands. So give, me a, I, give me a score in your mind for this game. Cause to me, it's like 28, 13 blowout kind of, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, I would give it a little more juice. I'd say like 35, 21, something like that. Okay. Like the Kansas I, City still winning by two scores. You're going to give three touchdowns to this team that can't, can't get in the end zone. I'll give them two touchdowns and two field goals. Uh, at least I, I might give them three. All right. I don't know. I think you're giving them a little bit too much. I think, I think Casey, hey, look, man, they kicked seven field goals with McManus last week and scored 21 points. So <laughs> they did. maybe, maybe all 21 that you were just talking about. <laughs> field goals too. Oh, I remember when we used to play kickers in DFS. Clank. Oh, thank a shot God that's it. over. I mean, thank God that is over with. Oh, that, was a, won that. That, was that was one of the funniest things. And you have to go find your kicker. A lot of people are like, what? <laughs> I remember back in my time in 2015 where kickers were in DFS. Yeah, my, I, I've eliminated kickers from most of my leagues. So my cousin 
was hitting me up and he's like, which kicker should I get? I'm like, I don't know, dude. I don't pay attention to kickers uh, at all. I've got Boswell on all my teams and I just take the donut when they're on a bye. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you about these stupid kickers. So. Outside of Hilaire and Patrick, I really don't have a whole lot in this game that I'm chasing because I feel like the tough thing with the charger, I mean, excuse me, with the uh, Chiefs is that it's just really difficult to pin down what they do week to week. That's what makes them so difficult to guard. I mean, I just don't want to pay up for $9,000 for Mahomes. makes no sense to me in this game where I just don't think he's going to be in any kind of contested game. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, I think, is the one guy that I will go back to because I think there will be the Le'Veon Bell, oh, you know, here we go. And, and Yeah, it's but just, if they are winning in a blowout, isn't that the time you want to get your new guy in no, and get him I familiar? I think you get him a couple carries and you go see Daryl Williams and other guys like that. And you're going to see right. what else do. Uh, I mean, Andy reads that he may not even play this weekend. So that's he, what I you mean. Know. Like, uh, you know, this, this narrative, like this narrative of Le'Veon Bell, all of a sudden now going to, you know, right away. No, that's craziness. It's madness. And Hilaire's coming off a huge game. And I think Hilaire is feeling a little pressure right now. And I think he showed that against Buffalo and I think I want that. Again, I think it's a well, better Buffalo play. also is god awful at stopping the run. That's why I mentioned Michael P. Ryan as a throwaway lineup guy because Buffalo is so horrific against the run. But I'm not I'm not and I'm not trying to take away anything from Hilaire. I know he understands the situation. And Eric Bianami told like him, you know, because he's been catching the ball a lot this year, too. Like, I'm not looking for a repeat of last week's game. I'm looking yeah. for a good overall total points. It's a little bit harder on the half point PPR than the full. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with Alaire. I just, I think there's some other plays I like better. That's all. All right, let's go to San Francisco at New England. Boy, Welsh and I are fun with this one. Um, yeah, I think you can. I mean, honestly. I don't want I don't, anything. I don't think I, I want anything time. in this game either. Do you want Debo's any Pats okay. Defense? Debo's an okay buy. That's it. The problem is Pat's defense is, is basically top of the board, too. So I might as well just get for $200 more and just take, just take like, Buffalo. Why would I even Kansas do the Jets. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, I'd rather... I'll spend two hundred dollars less and take the Chiefs defense. <laughs> like yeah, that. yeah, I, I'm okay with that too. Debo is okay here. That's it. I don't want any other. I don't want anything to do with the Patriots. I don't want any other Niners while they're playing so bad. So Debo, and that's it. Watch this will be like an incredible like thirty one thirty game. Like it was, I, I hope it is. That would be fun. It would be great to watch. I, but I mean, you, are you going to put your money on the over in this game, uh, regardless of what it is? No. 43 and a half, <laughs> by the way. What is it? 40? 43 and a half. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I will. That's kind of low. Nope. I won't. No, thanks. I think that's if, if for this year, it's low. Game's going to be 20 to 3, and everyone's going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go with the last one then. It's Jacksonville at the Chargers. Chargers coming off a bye. Uh, look, Minshew hasn't played well, but in terms of fantasy, he's averaging around 20 points a game. Just keep that in mind, okay? It ain't pretty, but I know they're talking about benching him, which would be so stupid. Like, what are you proving by throwing Mike Glennon out there? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, James Robinson, I'm out now because what's happened is everybody is now wise to the James Robinson dump-off things that were happening in the first couple weeks of the season. They're being aggressive on Minshew. They're being aggressive up front. Keelan Cole has been good. DJ Shark, if healthy enough, is good. 55 and 65 for DJ 47 and 55 for Keelan Cole. Chenault, we've had some love for on the show, but I don't want to go too crazy with this one. However, I think Justin Herbert is in play this week too. Uh, he's 75. He's actually more expensive than Stafford, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but I think well, Jacksonville's he's miserable and they're coming off a bye. Coming so. off a bye. They're miserable. Uh, but Keenan Allen, we don't have clarity on as of yet. Um, I would be shocked if he played, but Mike Williams will be there at 47 and 59. I think Justin Jackson and Joshua Kelly are guys because they're splitting the backfield. I fade away from Herbert and Williams is not terrible. Uh, I like Herbert a little bit more on the uh, DK side at 64. He's a little bit better of a buy there. Uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Again, I kind of find it hard to really get involved here, but I do think Herbert has some, uh, some more appeal than people might realize. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm just not going to be that in on Herbert. I, I think this is a, you know, chargers get up fairly quick. Hopefully we get the Herbert touchdowns then. Um, and, and then we grind it out with Kelly and Jackson, which makes me like Jackson a lot as he is fairly cheap, 4,900 
on DK and 6,100 on FanDuel. So I like him as a buy. I like Mike Williams specifically if Keenan Allen is a no-go. Uh, Mike Williams always seems to step up in that those type of games. He's 4,700 and 5,900, so a nice cheap option. And the only other one, uh, the only guy, I, a guy I'm really interested in this game at all is DJ Chark because they peppered him with targets when he wasn't 100%. I feel like he's going to come into this game a little bit more healthy and get peppered with targets again, 5,500 and 6,500. So that's, those are my three guys that I would be He's a great buy right now in a trade too in your season long leagues. Go get DJ shark right now. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. Healthy. He's a terrific player. Go out and get him. Okay. It doesn't matter he, if giraffe neck or uh, mustache or throwing. <laughs> and he's basically caught every ball that's been thrown to him this year. <laughs> like, I mean, the yeah. guy's been fantastic. Uh, so that's that game there, which means it's that time again, boys and girls, it's time to find the end zone. Scott Bogman and I are going to each pick a running back and a wide receiver who's going to score this week. And whoever has the more touchdowns wins. And you can get involved in this as well. Go follow us over on Twitter at line star app and line star NFL retweet and like this segment and you can get a chance to play along with us one of us will be your champion so boggs i'll let you go first this week a pretty good idea where you're going so give me the running back for you that is going to find the end zone in week seven in the nfl all right i've lost two weeks in a row so i gotta get back i gotta get back i gotta get going give me alvin Kamara to score a touchdown this week chalk yes. easy give me alvin Kamara. two weeks the worm is turning here i will take Kareem Hunt, my dude, against the Cincinnati Bengals, grounded and pounding. All things will be good for Kareem Hunt against the Cincinnati Bengals. My wide receiver, DK Metcalf, of course, because all that guy <laughs> does is catch touchdowns. So will give you me- pick someone not named DK Metcalf? Uh, it was last week you couldn't pick DK Metcalf. I was going to say I tried last week, but he was on a bye. I would still do it if I could have. And uh, no, the answer to your question is I will still take DK Metcalf as long as I get that opportunity. And I picked the wide receiver first this week. So who's your wide receiver, my friend? And I assume it's someone not named DK. Uh, well, I wanted DK. That's why I tried to talk you off of him. I was going to try to talk you off and then immediately pick him. Uh, no, I'm going to take uh, Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay against Atlanta. That was my number two anyway. So we yeah. were up here. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a bloodbath. This is gonna be like a five-four battle. I feel like. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Hopefully, it's not a one to zip or whatever. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Let Let's go with Kenny Galladay against Atlanta. You know, Atlanta improving, playing better without Quinn, but you know, still young guys in that secondary. So I'll, I'll go with Galladay. All right, Camara, Hunt, Galladay, Metcalf. Those are your picks. Again, go find us on the Twitter machine and have some fun with us and let's win some free stuff courtesy of the Line Star app. You can win some free swag, so get on that. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the Pre-Snap Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we're everywhere, iHeart, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, blah, blah, we're everywhere. And, of course, go follow us on Twitter at Bogman Sports, at Joe Pizapia 17 That'll do it for us. There's nothing left to do now except down, set, You've been listening to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by Line Star. Hit subscribe, drop a review, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy football experts Joe Pizapia and Scott Bogman.